Greetings, ladies and mandel jets, and welcome to this latest episode of uh, Tales, Tales from, from Outer from space. Out space. space, where I take a space-related story from around the internet and read it out loud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Please don't forget to do the usual YouTube gumph, because if you don't, the nanite swarms will steal your other sock. But more importantly, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I'd quickly like to thank the following Tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you very much. Story Double One. Jumped, written by Belly Master. A quiet scuffing alerted wary ears. Nondescript featureless. The alleyway was nothing more than an aborted dream of a dying neighborhood. Cron stepped out from a gap between two abandoned kiosks to block the intruder. Kron was a joven, hard-limbed and wrapped in lean muscle. The joven race was one of the few that could, on average, outclass a human in physical fight. Hardened plates grew on the faces of their thin limbs, a naturally occurring defense against the eroding qualities of the home environment's harsh winds. Longer muscle connecting points throughout their skeleton heightened strength above that of a human, and their endurance was acceptable. Their bodies, when viewed head-on, were remarkably slender, but the moment they turned to the side, they became apparent that the aerodynamic development had suggested growth forward and backward instead of out. Kron tapped a cloven hoof on the ground to be sure the human was aware of her presence. The human... A very thick figure with a squat face and a round figure stopped moving and looked at her. The sounds of the city echoed through the alleyways as they stared at one another. Kron pointed towards the human's mag. The human shook his head. She crouched into a ready stance and the human pulled off the bag and set it in between the two kiosks. This one looked a bit heavier than the average human, but it didn't matter. The Jovid attacked. Three harsh blowing kicks followed by the side arm movement. Every attack was in line with the bone reinforcement of the Jovian's body, putting all the weight and strength into the blows into the reinforced edge of two fingers wide. Two of the kicks went wide. The third met its mark. The human keeled over as if struck by a pipe. Missing the cider meant for its hand. The human grabbed the Jovian's leg and twisted his hips, throwing her into the wall. Kron took the blur in silence. The alleyway repeated sounds of heavy breathing and scuffling back to them as they recircled, fainting and closing in. The human attacked, already favoring his left leg. He pulled forward and rushed the Joven backwards, trying to drive them into the more public street. The Joven executed a half turn and swung down with the right limb. Only the human's forearm, thrown up an instinct, saved his vertebra from being shattered. The human gritted his teeth and adopted a closed stance, arms and legs tied in towards the body, and the Jovan attacked with a series of blows, driving her limbs into those of the humans with a force twice as that that the human could muster. The human was trying to deflect the blows as it inched forward towards her, step by step, but the damage it was receiving was significant. The Joven whirled, chopping her arm through the air towards the human's head like a propeller blade. In a split second, she found herself flying through the air until she hit the ground and bounced up, breathless. The human came at her from the side and drove two knuckles into the center of her upper arm. It was followed up by two more sharp strikes, aimed at both the head and the thigh. Only the thigh hit connected before the Joven turned to once more face her opponent. They were tiring, both of them but the energy remained high. The Joven circled back to again present her defensive sight to the human, while the human tried to outmaneuver her and gain her sight again. The human's forearms were already starting to bruise, and he was sporting a significant limp. They closed in again, more mindful in deliberately trying to harm one another. Gone was the speed and the impulse that came at the beginning of a fight. Now was the strategy. Blow for counterblow, they went on, the Joven landing strikes more often than not, while the human missed several times. The Joven backed off to take a breath, but the human stuck to her with a stubbornness. 
He knew that if he ceased moving, stiffness would take a hold of his limbs, and he'd be out of the fight. The Joven thrashed, peppering his upper body with blows. She fell hard when the human swept out her legs and tried to grab her. She spun across the ground and stumbled to her feet. She couldn't let the human get a firm grip on her. When they closed again, the Joven landed a meaty blow to the human's limping leg that sent him crumpling to the ground. She took the opportunity to back up and breathe, unfamiliar with the exertion lasting this long. The human gasped and hit the ground with a thud, but his eyes never left those of the Joven. He dragged himself up and came towards her again. Then she took halting steps over to where the human had left his bag and reached for it. She didn't have time to react when the hands grabbed hold of her and flung her into the kiosk. She folded down onto the ground, thrashing blindly, and the hands found her again. The Joven crashed bodily into the old stall and tumbled to the ground with a grunt. The human limped towards the Joven with a deadness of motion, his left leg dragging behind him. She tried to stand, but the debris under her betrayed her footing. The human reached down for her, heedless of the strike she rained down on the head and shoulders. Then she was lifted over his head with a grunt, freely before flung directly into the ground. The Joven felt one of her protective bone plates crack. She struck out blindly and landed a lucky hit of the human, sending him to the ground beside her. The Joven tried to crush his throat, but he caught her forearm and twisted. The donkey motion disrupted the streamlined musculature of her body and caused immense pain. She didn't make a sound. They both rolled to their feet again, though it took several seconds. Weary and injured, the human put up his hands again and started towards her again, somehow still able to move, a glutton for pain. The joven shook her head and lowered her limbs. She was done. The human wasn't. He caught her with two enormous blows that sent her to the ground, falling over himself in the process. But again, he started to rise. Gron crawled away as quickly as she could knowing that if she took two or three more hits like that, that she was done for. She limped to her feet and staggered out of the alley into the more public area, chancing a glance behind her. There stood a silhouette of a human, limping and broken, having taken far more damage than he should have been able to. But he was still standing. End of story. Story number two. You need a human on board, written by Glitchkey. You should have a human on your ship. Simple, if possible. It doesn't matter if there's some sort of fundamental incompatibility between species. They can smooth that over. It doesn't matter if you don't like them. You need a human on your ship. Everyone does. Ask any statistician, or logistician, any military official, scientist, or mathematician, and they'll agree. You need a human or several on your ship. Humans can smooth over incompatibilities. They can make it work, but a ship with a human is statistically more likely to survive than one without. Yes, they're weak. Yes, they have terrible manners. We're all aware that they're not the brightest stars in the nebula. But humans make a ship more likely to survive and thrive. Humans can make anything work. We've been trying to figure out how they do it since first contact. We still don't know any more now than we did then. There are too many verifiable stories of ships beyond saving making it to the end of the journey because of human crew members. Patches with no integrity, repairs with no function. As soon as they're no longer necessary, there's absolutely no evidence showing that they can do what they did. But the ships made it back to the berth. You need a human on board. Somehow, reality bends to their whims, to their unwillingness to simply let things happen. Somehow, the humans make things better. Some of them call it luck. Others call it jerry-rigging. It's all the same. Humans don't operate the same way that we do. And we all benefit from it. What they do is simply put... Not possible. I'm sure you've seen the occasional strange ship at birth. A freighter that somehow limped in missing half their hull. Or a fighter 
They came in with no source of propulsion, a cruiser with no life support, and a living crew. Humans, all of them. You need a human on your ship, because to not have one leaves you vulnerable. Yes, you can still die if you have one, but somehow they make hopeless scenarios shrink into the distance and fade away. The universe itself seems to bend over backwards to please them. There isn't any other way to say this. If you have a ship, you need a human on board. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.